All right, checkpoint quiz 9.2. We're asked to find the sum. So this is the summation notation using the capital sigma. So let's remind ourselves what this means. The Greek letter sigma is telling us we're going to be adding a bunch of terms. What terms are we adding? We're adding terms that follow this formula. What values of k do I plug in? I start at k equals 1 and I end at k equals 4. So the first term I substitute k equals 1. So that's what I get when I plug in k equals 1 to that formula. Then the sigma tells me I'm adding. Now I go to k equals 2. So I plug 2 in for the k. I'm still adding. I go to k equals 3. And then I'm adding k equals 4. And I stop because that's the upper limit of the summation. So I simplify. 1 squared minus 1 is 0. 2 squared minus 1 is 3. 3 squared minus 1 is 8. 4 squared minus 1 is 15. So we got 3, 11, 26. So that'll do it for number 1. All right, number two, we have another summation. Here, k goes from 0 to 49. And so we start writing this out. k equals 0. Oops. So 3 times 0 minus 5. So that's the k equals 0. Plus k equals 1. plus k equals 2 plus when will this thing ever stop? Well, k equals 49. So I have to add negative 5 plus negative 2 plus 1 plus all the way down to k equals 49. So what's 3 times 49? That'd be 120 and 27. So that'd be 147 minus 5 would be 142. Okay, now, I don't let you use calculators on the test, so there's got to be something more to this than just adding these up brute force. Well, you start looking at the terms. How are we going from one to the next? We're always adding three. So what we're actually doing is adding up an arithmetic sequence. And we can check that. If I look at a sub k is 3k minus 5. If I look at a sub k plus 1 minus a sub k, that would be 3k plus 1 minus 5 minus 3k minus 5. That would be 3k plus 3 minus 5 minus 3k plus 5. And when all this stuff cancels out, I'm just left with 3. All right. So this proves, in fact, that it's an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 3. So it's an arithmetic sequence that we're adding up, or well, not the whole sequence, but part of it. And so how does this work? So we know that the sum is equal to the number of terms times the average of the first and last term. So the number of terms, how many terms? Well, you may be tempted to think, oh, there's 49 terms. 49 minus 0 is 49, but you're, you're missing the 0 term. So there's actually 50 terms here. You always take the upper limit minus the lower limit and add 1. So we're actually adding 50 terms. And I'm taking the average of the first and last term. So the first term was negative 5. The last term is 142 
divided by 2. So negative 5 and, and uh, 142 is 137. I can divide the 2 into 50 and get 25. It says 25 oops, times 137. So I can go over here. Got to multiply that out. Old, old school. 5 times 7 is 35. Carry the 3. 5 times 3 is 15 and 8. Excuse me, 15 and 3 is 18. And 6. 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1. 2 times 6 is 7. 2. 5, 12, 14, 34. And so the answer is 34.25. Okay, so that'll do it for number two. All right, our last one here, right as a fraction, 0 0.31 repeating. And so the thing we have to realize here is remind ourselves what this means. First off, the vinculum here means you just keep repeating it and we can write this as an infinite sum 0 0.31 plus 0 0.0031 plus 0 0.00031 on down the line and so what we have is a geometric sequence and the way we're going from one to the next is we're multiplying by 1 over 100 we're inserting two decimal places there two zeros that means we're dividing by 100, so multiplying by 1 over 100. And this is going on forever. Okay, so this is the geometric series formula. We're adding up an infinite geometric series. So that means that this is equal to the a1 over 1 minus r. The first term, 0 0.31 over 1 minus the ratio, 1 over 100. So I want to convert everything to a fraction. So it's 31 over 100 divided by 99 over 100. That's 100 over 100 minus 1 over 100. And I simplify and I get 31 over 99. Okay, so that's what that looks like as a fraction. Now, um, if you want to use some results from calculus, you can actually get at this a different way. Um, the properties we have for summations stay in the book work equally well for infinite sums as they do for finite sums provided the infinite sums actually go somewhere okay so you know typically this kind of stuff isn't seen until calc 2 but uh, you may have seen this kind of argument in high school you let x be 0 0.31 repeating so once again, you write that out. Then if I take 100x, all right, and, and this is where the calculus comes in. Well, 100x, well, when you multiply a decimal by 100, don't you just move the decimal place two times? And the answer is yes. And so from a theorem by calculus, you, you can do that through repeating decimals as well. And so on. So if I line these things up, 100x is 31.3131, etc. x itself is 0.3131, etc. You can just subtract the equations. 100x minus x is 99x. And can't you just line up the decimals and cancel these out? And the answer is yes, but there's a calculus theorem that tells you you can do that. Divide both sides by 99, and you're back to where you started. All right, so the point is, is that calculus lets you extend what we know about finite sums to infinite sums in certain cases. All right, and in this particular case, we can actually arrive at this answer this way. All right, if you're interested as to why that actually works, you need to stick around and take some calculus. That'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 9.2.